shut up compressor. Okay, so throughout the series so far, I've been kind of waffling back and forth on whether or not I want to keep what I did five years ago with the kit cockpit, or if I want to try to take it to another level with this spare that I have. Now, part of the impetus for this is the availability over the last five years of a lot of really great aftermarket detail parts. You know, you have uh, stencils from Airscale, you have a newcomer to the scene, Anise, Annie's, I apologize for having no fucking clue how to pronounce this. But, you know, he does really great sort of generic stencils for cockpits and things like that. As well as recently, these 3D printed knobs. And there's also one for switches and whatnot. And they are gorgeous, but holy shit are they tiny. And they also require removing a bunch of cockpit detail in here. So... I think I'm going to go for it, if nothing else, just to get experience and try these things out and see how they go. But first, we have to basically get in here and make a bunch of holes. So, in the main cockpit tub, and in particular in these two other pieces, kind of hook in to the rear bulkhead. So for that, I've got this little punch that I use for basically identifying, here's where I need to drill holes. And I'm going to do that now. So just like that, then I'll come in with a drill and we'll make the actual holes. And I'm honestly terrified to think of how many drill bits I'm going to break doing this. Don't want to do any up here too close to the instrument panel, just because that'll fuck shit up. Alright, but you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and keep punching holes, and we'll come back and drill some. Okay, so I've punched a whole shitload of holes. Now it's time to drill, and we're going to be using a 05 millimeter bit. one out of <laughs> many. Three. So I'm not going to make you all sit here and watch all this, because that would be insane. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and drill these holes, and we'll pick back up. So after snapping several drill bits in the process of drilling out all those little damn holes in the cockpit, I decided to pull out my Proxon drill press, and it made short work of everything, and didn't break a single bit. So here we've got holes drilled all over the place. Here we've got more holes drilled. A shitload of them actually. 
And one more piece over on this little side business that basically seats right over here, just like so. So now that we've got those, I've gone ahead and taken the cockpit tub and sort of the upper deck here, glued them together, made sure they all fit nicely within the, uh, within the fuselage, glued in a couple bits, drilled a few more holes back here for routing some cabling, cut a whole bunch of other parts off, uh, ready for primer, and we've also got the 3D switches and whatnot. I've also got another pack that I need to get going. Where is it? So in addition to the various buttons, knobs, and dials, I've also got this set of like toggle-style switches. So these will be fun. Now I've tested, and even though I did drill these out with a 0.35 millimeter once my 0.5 and 0.4 broke, um, the various switches, buttons, and whatnot all fit. So we are in a good place there. Now it is a matter of spraying some primer. This Moto MK12 stuff is awesome, but it likes a lot of thinner. Okay, let's start priming things. So I'm going to start with getting these various switches and stuff sprayed so we can kind of get them out of the way. Okay, so now we can get on to the main event. And here we are, primer is all down on the cockpit and the upper deck. Coverage is at 100%. There's a few little light areas here and there, but I mean, it's all going to be painted gray and masking is going to be pretty minimal, basically just to help isolate the instrument panels, and that's it. And then we've also got some of the various little bits hanging around. These two other console pieces, for example. And the control stick. the BN stick and I was gonna go ahead and do all new rudders and here's the various pipes and shit that go on the upper deck not even bothering with the priming the aft of it because it sits behind where the uh, there's like a little bulkhead thing for the canopy and those actually sit behind it so no reason to worry about them because they are gonna be completely invisible and I was going to use new rudders, but then I found out that the ones that I had in the old cockpit just pull right out. I'd never glued them in. So I just kind of yoink right in there. And we'll be weathering them up a bit more than what they currently are and all that sort of stuff. But that's that. Next, it is time to paint the interior gray. Now, I was 
going to go ahead and paint the various buttons and things this color as well. Because when I look at reference photos, a lot of the switches and knobs and shit like that are gray. But I think I'm going to go with a different gray just to shift the tone slightly. It probably won't be noticeable at all. when everything is put together and stuck inside the fuselage. But what the hell. Okay, we're gonna spray the knobs and switches with some RAF medium C gray. There are all those little doodads. We can say goodbye to the gray for a little while. All right, now for the switches, we're gonna be using some MRP 128 silver. Okay, so I think these are in a pretty good place as well. Cool little silver switches. So I'm going to clean out the airbrush, and I'm going to get some masking done, and we're going to come back, and we're going to start painting the consoles. Okay, I've masked off about as much as I have the patience to do. Now it's time to start spraying some night camo black. Now with the cockpit, it's going to be interesting, and I'm sure I'm going to have to come back in here and touch up a little bit of overspray in places. There's no real avoiding it, unless I wanted to spend way more time than I'm interested in doing all this masking. Okay, we have shit sprayed. Now the big challenge here is going to be restoring the gray in between these little fuckers. I've got a pretty decent method for it, but matching this gray is not the easiest thing in the world. Okay, all that crap is removed. There we go. For additional shits and giggles, the instrument panel. Mm. 
not an exact paint match, but I think after weathering and after all the details go in, it'll be sufficiently busy that nobody will really care. So. All right, now that we have the cockpit painted, I'm going in and I'm adding the little tiny gaps between all the various side console plates. And the way I'm doing this is with some ABT 502 light gray, which isn't an exact match, but good enough for government work. And some VMS Universal Weathering Carrier, which is actually working really, really well. Seems quite a bit more uh, flow happy, I would say, than your usual run of the mill odorless mineral spirits. And it does not help us at all that these things tend to be a little bit shallower on the center console portion. But hey, last time I barely even made a nod to this, so. It's a sign I'm growing as a modeler. Okay, that'll do. Okay, so now it's time to start adding some color and shit to the few switches that are still hanging around. And for this, I am going to use my old intruder cockpit as sort of a loose guide on where I want to go with those. And for the colors, I'm basically going to be using three main colors here. First of these is going to be Vallejo Light Gray. The second one is going to be Vallejo Off White. And the third will be Vallejo Flat Red. Now I know some people online have been asking for a tutorial in how exactly the fuck I managed to paint the instrument panel five years ago and it's basically the exact same thing that we're going to be doing on the cockpit here so follow along and it's really not all that hard it's just like a lot of detail work extremely tedious for this the two things you'll really need are a toothpick and I also find using an old airbrush needle, very handy. Now there is one more color I'm probably gonna bring into play and that is MRP's uh, figure painting acrylic. This is kind of like their version of Vallejo, their chrome, because it seems to be excellent so far. And so for a few uh, warning lights and things like that, I'll be using that to sort of base these up. Okay. So looking in here, Basically, I start by getting just a little bit of paint on the toothpick, not too much, and then kind of wiping most of it off. And then we just come in here and touch it on. It's a little bit more than I would like. Yeah, 
you know. I don't like that first one at all. I need water. What you love when you do something a million times and you do it on the camera and it fucks up on the first go? It's a blast. Another toothpick here. Just work the edges of that just a little bit. Okay, there we go. I'm happy with that. So I think that's all the gray that we're doing on <laughs> on that one. That's not so bad. All right, come on, airbrush needle. Don't fuck me over. Time to do the white. Good old fun white. Three down. Now comes the really fun part, getting this keypad up here on the bombardier station. It's very easy to forget to breathe doing this. Okay. Some big old chunky keypad things going on there. Let's move on to the red. 
Red usually seems to be the easier of the colors to get down. All right, now it is time to start adding the fun stencils to the cockpit. So I think half the joy of this is figuring out what we're going to do and where. And the funny thing is the 132nd ones almost feel like they're maybe too big. <laughs> These other ones. So I'm definitely going to put one right here. Now the special fun of this is being able to see the holes. Just a second to set. You know, we're gonna hit this stuff with, so this ammo decal fix has been quickly growing as one of my favorite decal options. Uh, the stuff is no joke. It has worked on those, even worked pretty well on those shitty Aeromaster decals from the P47. So we'll see how it does on these. Okay, so this is really slow and tedious, but you're getting the idea. Uh, we'll pick back up here in a bit once I've got some more of these knocked out. Okay, so we're probably about, I don't know, halfway through putting stencils down in the cockpit. And I just wanted to check in before I call it a night and take a look at what we've got here. So these stencil decals are phenomenal. Uh, you definitely have some sheen variants here, especially as the decal fix does its thing. But I mean, the, the added detail to the cockpit is not to be denied at all. Uh, in addition to all of these little you know, circles around the very, where gate or all these little circle hash mark things around where dials and whatnot will go are fantastic. But we've also got sort of like a scale thing here on the throttle. Got a couple of little, you know, they basically would be text, but too small to see. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here to busy it up. And especially once we start adding the actual knobs and switches themselves in. I'm hoping that we'll get some really, really cool looking details out of this. Now, just to give a sense of sort of what this will look like eventually, right back here, we actually have one of these that I've gone kind of dropped in place just for shits and giggles. So it's a tiny little thing, but these are the smaller holes I drilled just to sort of verify for my own happy sanity that they will work. Uh, I pulled one of these off the so yeah, you can see, you know, having a bunch of little, and this is like a weird sort of square shaped one, which is why I picked it, because it's not one that I'm probably going to use all that many of. But I mean, we've got circular ones, we've got sort of knob dial things, all kinds of stuff in here. So that just gives a really good sense of sort of the relief that we can expect. So a lot of good raised texture and all that sort of stuff. And then we've also got, who can forget, 
all the switches. So lots of fun to come. But for now, I'm going to call it a night and kind of let the uh, decal fix do its thing. We'll check and see how all these look when we start up again tomorrow. And one final thing I wanted to note uh, as a tip for anybody using these. Finding the center of these holes once you put the decals down is a pain in the ass. And so what I've done is I've literally taken the flashlight on my phone. And as I'm working, I hold it, the cockpit over it. And look, there are all of the various holes that we need to find. So it makes centering these things a lot easier when you have a light source underneath. Just something you might want to consider if you are planning on using these yourself. Super convenient.